led to her confusion about where she Listen. was. And when she went to go unlock the door, the door was already unlocked. And I guess at that point she makes no, she's just working on instinct at that point, not even taking a second to go, wait a minute, is this she's, my apartment? Right? She's not even asking. What? Who's this? She took the stand today. Do again, I, in do I know where I am? Event. Is this my apartment? Should I shoot? Is this intruder? Because Burglar, perhaps? Her attorneys say this is just a she tragic accident. Been putting that key, a key fob into the lock. She was very drunk, they say. So her ears, she could hear the she C said melody that she saxophone. Saw, the guy's oh, name was Botham Jean. Her she saw was Botham awesome. standing in the back of an apartment, oh, uh, the back of the apartment, which was dark at the time. And when she saw that there was a person in the room, tunnel vision. She completely ignored the fact that that was not her apartment. I, I mean, it didn't even register to her, according to her testimony, because she was only concentrating on the fact that she there was a strange man, big man, right in front of her, and she had no idea who it was. In front of my piano? Hey, where's my piano? Right? She, that's what you and I would have said. And again, she's just coming off of a 15-hour shift as a police officer. So she's tired and she talked to her earlier about her growing up in Arlington, her affair with her partner who was married, um, her training as an officer, and then of course, most importantly, the night that she went in there. About an hour into her testimony, she actually uh -huh. broke down into tears. That's and unfortunate. I don't she like what it means at one point because she couldn't get the words out because she was crying. Because the English for her is difficult. And I understand it. What? Break, but, uh, break from what? The defense attorney wanted her to keep going. Oh, the, the, the defense always wants you to keep going. Apartment. On and on, they, and she pulled they out bait you like you're a fish. She, again, she was in her apartment, and that there was a dude in there. Dude in there. She pulls out her gun. What? After a, a 15 hour shift? After a 15-hour shift, you really you're going to see some dude in your apartment next to the piano. I am not buying it. Ten percent. Avoided going in the wrong place. It's not her place. Why not just go to your house after a hard day night? A couple of times. Hey, hey, hey! In an aggressive tone before she fired two times. Wait. He said. Who said hey? That makes the difference. The attorney asked, what was going through your head when you fired the gun? And she said, I was scared that he was going to kill me. Uh, that's not good for anybody. After the shots, she walked deeper into the apartment. That's when she realized it wasn't in her, it, it wasn't hers. She said she noticed a round ottoman in the living room area of the apartment. Right? And that's when it clicked that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't her. I haven't been to Macy's. Oh. She said it started hitting me that this guy, I have no idea who she he is, right? and that's when everything started to spin. She dialed 911 while she What's was the kneeling next to him. She had to get up to go to the hallway when the dispatcher Why would I have one in my house? I don't even know how to say it. She didn't know that it wasn't hers at that point. I saw a pillow on the floor. I realized. With one hand on the phone I mean, and on the other hand part. doing chest compressions, according to her. Oh, it's terrible. She knew that it wasn't good. She knew that she shot and uh, mortally wounded this guy. The prosecution, by the way, said that there was no evidence that she did chest protect, uh, chest compressions because she didn't have. Any but you're fading out there. I'm going to have to uh, ask you to wait a second while and I go around. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. And were unused. It doesn't listen. She said at one point that she was thinking, "I shot an innocent man. He didn't deserve." I didn't. I thought I was in my apartment. She also sent text messages to her police partner. Remember, her married partner that she was having an affair with at one point while she was still on the phone with 911. And she said she was scared and she had no help to perform CPR, which in that case probably would have been a two-person job. She's still on the stand. If she says more, we'll definitely uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later as well. But this is highly unusual that this woman taken a stand in her own defense in uh, just a really hard, hard trial there in Dallas. When we come back, adult bunk beds. All right, Would you? Adult.
Hmm, well, 